Approaching Rosh Hashanah, I would like to give an overview of the basics of the mitzvah of hearing the shofar. It is common knowledge that one should hear a hundred blasts of the shofar, a hundred kolos, on Rosh Hashanah. How do we get to that number? The Torah tells us on the month of Tishrei that we need to hear three times a trua. Trua, trua, trua. And therefore, the Gemara derives that all three truas must be heard on Rosh Hashanah. The Gemara also explains that according to Torah law, every trua must have a tkia before and a tkia after. A tkia is a long, straight blast. A trua will be immediately discussed. And therefore, we need to hear three sets of tkia, trua, tkia, and that fulfills the Torah law on Rosh Hashanah. That would be considered nine kolos, nine blasts. However, we have an element of doubt. What is considered a trua by Torah law? Is it what we call a trua, which is short blasts, as in tu 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 tu? Or is it three longer ones, which we call shvarim, tu tu tu? Or perhaps it's a combination of the two, shvarim trua, tu 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 tu. We're not sure which one it is. Therefore, we fulfill all possible variations. And therefore, we hear three times tkia, shvarim trua tkia, or in short, tashrat, and another three times tkia, shvarim tkia, or in short, tashat, and another three times tkia, trua tkia, or in short, tarat. And therefore, that gives us all possible variations. That gives us up to 30 kolos. Gets us to 30 because tashrat is 4, tashat is 3, tarat is 3, that's 10. Each one of those we hear 3 times and that's 30. That fulfills what we need to do by biblical law, Torah law. Rabbanan, the rabbis enacted, that we should have two sets of these. Why? Kedei arbev et satan In order to confuse the satan. What does that mean? These are high concepts but it's a, in general, it's a day of judgment, and we want to minimize the prosecution of the Satan, and we want to strengthen the mercy of the judgment. Because of this, we do the whole thing twice, which shows how we cherish the mitzvah. So, the first time, we do all 30 kolos before davening Musaf, and then we do it again during Musaf. In some communities it is done during the silent Shman Esrei, in some communities it is done during the Chazar Sashat and the repetition of the Shman Esrei, but either way, we have 30 plus 30, that gets us up to 60. That is really sufficient, but the accepted custom is that at the end of davening, we do another 30, and the reason is because in case the blowing wasn't done properly in the previous phase, we have a chance to make up for it by listening again. And that brings us up to 90. And then all the way at the end, we do another set of 10, which is one tashrat, one tashat, and one tarat. And the purpose is to get us up to the number 100. The reason we want 100 is because the whole understanding of what a trua is, the Gemara derives from the fact that the word Trua, in its Aramaic translation, is Yebava, and we find that Sisra's mother was Meyabev, was a cried, and she had a hundred cries. So, in order to correspond to the source of how we learn the whole uh, understanding of what a Trua is, we say to have 100 blasts. All we really need by Torah law is 30, and when, uh, let's say, some, somebody can't be by davening, and we want to blow for someone who's sick or homebound or whatever the case may be, it is enough to blow for them 30 kolos, three times tashrat, three times tashat, and three times tarat. However, when we're in the congregation davening with the tzibur, so then we want to make up for the whole 100 kolos as explained. It is of interest to note that according to many authorities, it's not a real doubt that that we're not sure is it a shvarim or a trua or a shvarim trua, but really each one of these is certainly good enough to be a trua. And the only reason we have all of them together is because since some places had this form of trua and some places had that form of trua, because these are all different variations of what the Torah means by the word trua, 
Therefore, in order to make a uniform minhag, a uniform custom, this is how uh, it was enacted that everyone should do the whole tashrat, tashat, and tarat. What should we be thinking about during the shofar blowing? I want to give three major themes that are presented. The Rambam writes that this is an awakening call. Don't let life flow on in a way that you're just going along by rote. This is a time of judgment, and you have to take action, and you have to work on improving your life, and the shofar is a wake-up call saying, get moving and make things better. The Sefer HaChinuch says that the idea of shofar is to remember and recall Akedas Yitzchak, how Avraham brought Yitzchak and wanted to bring him as a carbon, a sacrifice to Hashem. And this is to remind us that we should be dedicating our lives to Hashem. And the Vilna Gon, the Gra, says that this is an opportunity to proclaim Hashem as king because this is done through a shofar, it's a proclamation. And he says, therefore, during shofar blowing, a person should feel an intense happiness because the simcha, the happiness, is an integral part of showing that the coronation, the crowning of the king, is something that you are happy with and you're accepting upon yourself willingly.